Tonight on The Roast, Tony Abbott submits a draft of his carbon tax repeal legislation and the former HSU boss pleads guilty to fraud. But first, Mark Humphreys is just like a chocolate milkshake, only human. Victorian MP Jeff Shaw has violently clashed with a group of protesters on the steps of Parliament, pushing one old man like he's a push pop. Let's watch a video. Not that I enjoy watching old men fall down, but do we have a better angle? Yeah, that's a bit better, but have we got a third angle? So to answer my question, no, we did not have a third angle. Shaw claims that protesters heckled, yelled at, spat upon and hit him. Adding insult to injury, Shaw then had to attend question time. Poor bastard. One of the men involved in the scuffle, 74-year-old taxi driver John Zammett, was part of a group that were protesting the government's reforms to the taxi industry. So no prizes for guessing what Victorian taxi drivers were talking about in their cabs today. Their children. Taxi drivers love talking about their children. There's been no apology from Jeff Shaw for pushing the taxi driver down. Well, Jeff, good Good luck getting a cab in Melbourne now. Anyway, enough about my children. Hey, I know you. You're that piece of shit that pushed John over. Where'd you say you live? At the bottom of this lake? No! The 41 newly elected members of the House of Representatives are attending a two-day seminar about the procedural and administrative aspects of their new jobs. Essentially, it's Parliament's orientation week. All right, where's the gosler May? The charlatans selling overpriced paintball? The various societies and clubs I can join to compensate for my lack of identity. What? There's none of that? There's just a parting speaker, Anna Burke, making a speech about how to act in Parliament? Well, fine, let's hear what she had to say. I reckon you could die in your office in this building and nobody would know. Worst O-week ever! And finally, ABC's 7.30 program has revealed allegations of widespread doping in Australia's greyhound racing industry. Worse yet, turns out that rabbit they chase is just a stuffed toy. In the past year, more than 70 dogs have tested positive to banned substances, including Viagra, explaining why a recent photo finish resulted in one dog winning by a stiffy. Insiders allege that many greyhounds have tested positive for popular drugs, including cocaine. I thought dog owners buying Purina's filet mignon dog food was excessive. Who's splashing out on doggy bags of blow. But typically these dogs will get off scot-free because apparently canines are incapable of purchasing banned substances. Well, I've seen them fetch newspapers, so who are you going to believe? Me or the drug-cheating dogs? For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. I believe the dogs. Next up tonight, Tony Abbott has released a draft of his proposed carbon tax repeal legislation, stating this legislation will be the first bill considered by the new parliament. And by considered, he means rubber stamped or else he'll try and push it through again unaltered, and then if it fails a second time, he'll ask the governor general to dissolve the parliament, right after he puts his toys back in the pram. So it seems after spending six years in opposition, Tony Abbott is so used to opposing things, he is now even opposing the idea of an opposition. And he is keen to get his legislation through so that he can get to the real business of introducing his direct action measures to combat climate change, including planting trees. An idea I'm pretty sure he stole from my year two assignment. Now, Tony Abbott has appealed to the Labor Party, stating, if they say yes, we support the carbon tax, they will effectively be saying no to the people of Australia. Which is why he believes the Labor Party, being pragmatic, political survivors, will ultimately embrace that opportunity. Which is some pretty impressive peer pressure. Although if I learned anything from year nine PDHPE, it's that peer pressure is wrong. I also learnt how to put a condom on a banana, which is just silly because a banana can't get you pregnant. So even though new Labor leader Bill Shorten has just come off a well-fought victory against Anthony Albanese, now he has to steady himself for the real fight against a much bigger and arguably more powerful opponent. Congratulations, kid! You did it! You won! You won the fight! I should go home and rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, kid. Go on. You've earned it, but make it quick. Your next fight's in two minutes. Against who? That guy. Kid, I know I said it before the last fight, but this is the fight you've been training for. Of course, Tony Abbott doesn't actually want to fight. He just wants his opponent to take the fall and let him win. Otherwise, fight's over and it's double dissolution time, forcing Australia to go back to the polls to re-elect the entire Senate. Jazz Twemlow wants to explain why. Taking time out from wearing a variety of lab coats and high-vis vests, Tony Abbott momentarily put aside his dream of becoming a life-sized, pretend-to-be-one-of-the-people action man to hold Labour to ransom over the carbon tax repeal with the threat of making Australians vote for something again, twice, in a double dissolution that would see Australians voting for double the number of senators on ballot papers no doubt large enough to wipe the anus of a god. 
But is getting rid of the carbon tax really worth turning Australia's government into political gloop by dissolving everything? Abbott ensures his promise of shoving a tailpipe in Mother Nature's mouth will save average households $550 a year, which means we would no longer have to spend that kind of ridiculous money on a planet I recently valued at only $307. But it is a gamble. If the coalition pushes for a double dissolution, they'll force a double election with the aim of scrapping a tax that brought the millions. The 2010 election cost $161 million, which means the coalition want to go all in and spend $160 million for the chance to win less money. Ridiculous. For The Roast, I'm Jazz Twemlow. Finally, former health services union boss Michael Williamson has pleaded guilty to embezzling almost a million dollars from the HSU and then attempting to cover it up. Mr Williamson left court yesterday and avoided the media by either faking a phone call, calling the talking clock or just having a particularly one-sided conversation with whomever was on the other end of that line. Michael, mate, how'd court go? Mike? Mike? Hello? Hello? Michael, I can hear a friend in media but I can't hear you. Mike? Mike! Mike, if you smell like a butt, say nothing. Yeah. Not for nothing, but I'm pretty sure that car didn't indicate as it left either. Officers, arrest that man. Again. Now, Williamson pleaded guilty to a number of charges, one of which was for corruptly receiving $600,000 in cash through a scheme that involved inflating the price on union memorabilia, specifically union books. And that's admittedly impressive because it involved people actually buying books. But he also pleaded guilty to embezzling money via a company named CanMe, which was run by his wife, invoiced the HSU for work it never did, and took its name as an acronym formed from the names of the Williamson's five children. So not a masterful cover-up, but it was certainly better than their initial name, Schism, which was an acronym for Sneaky Company, <laughs> I'm Stealing Money. And so Can Me, part of the wider commercial network that also included Should Me, Could Me, Will Me, and Me Just Did, ended up defrauding the union of $338,470. Although I'm sure he didn't plan to steal nearly a million dollars in the beginning, it's just these things tend to start small and quickly spiral out of control. Hey, just the petrol for the company car, which I'll pay for with this company credit card. I, uh, you know what? Chuck in this Mars bar. No one at the union will mind if I just buy myself one little Mars bar. Mars bar. Mars bar. Mars bar. <laughs> oh, what, what happened? What are all these invoices? Why did I buy so many yachts? Ugh. Itchy. Ugh. Not guilty. Then, of course, there was the attempted cover-up. Literally the day after the investigation began, Mr Williamson reportedly approached a computer expert named Brad Bird to help him remove incriminating material from his laptop, saying... Mate, I've got files on my computer. I need to get rid of them. I need to make sure these files cannot be traced. And how did Williamson's tech expert disappear those files? Bird transferred the files to a USB and then handed the laptop back to Williamson. The USB was subsequently given to the police by Bird. He backed up the evidence. Although I guess that is the kind of IT service you get from an IT company that you co-own and also use to embezzle funds instead of actually providing IT service. It's the same thing every time, Tom. A group of workers pay money to a union that's meant to protect them from corrupt bosses and instead have their money used to buy their union's corrupt bosses, Ferraris and a lifetime supply of Mars bars. It's a tale as old as time. This way. These 20 on hour days sure do make me clumsy. Originally, unions were designed to protect workers like this. Look, just give me some money and the unions will help shorten your work day. Oh, thanks, mister. Thank you. And happy ninth birthday. You've obviously lived a tough and miserable life, you mustachioed little man-child. But now it seems like more and more unions are just in it for themselves. Dave, here's some money to protect a worker's rights. OK, sure, I will protect that mustachioed kid. Excellent. But then who will protect me? I'll protect me. And then waste everyone's time and money by saying they didn't do the thing everyone says they did. How do you plead? Guilty. Really? Really? Really. This has never happened before. What do we do now? You know, it would have been much cheaper and easier for everyone if you just said you were guilty two years ago. Do you want a Mars bar? I don't want your hush Mars bar. For the roast, I'm Nick Richardson. Everyone keeps saying that today. And earlier today, Williamson apologised to the HSU and promised his assistance in claims against others. And since some of those others in this case were his family members, I'd say Christmas lunch at the Williamson household might be reconstituted turkey enjoyed on cell block C. Mister, I'd like some reconstituted prison turkey. 
Well, go and defraud hundreds of thousands of dollars from thousands of workers, you mustachioed little scamp. Good night!